Hello and welcome back to Adventure's Edge, Heroes of the Veil, Season 2, Episode 22. Lots of twos. Mm -hmm. Lots of twos. 22. Two, two, two. Yeah, what do you want? Why are you looking at me? <laughs> I don't know. I was waiting for something. I don't know. A lot okay. of expectations you got there, bud. Yeah. No end of expectations. I have high expectations for you today. Okay. Our heroes are going to do great things. I feel it. Mm-hmm. Did you say degrade things? <laughs> degrade <laughs> things. Our, We're gonna our degrade heroes things. are going to degrade things. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's he's a, not wrong. Well, if she keeps on not being her friend, I think there might be more <laughs> of that. <laughs> well, I want to know is what happens when she finds the one that I slit, who is me, slit the throat. You know, the heat of the battle. Um, I mean, well, you would know that that was not one of the blades. Oh, it wasn't? No. Oh, who was uh, that? Was one of the elves that worked yeah. with him? Ah, oh, yeah. gotcha. So Vesrin had those. Both those guys were were unrooted. If that was not clear, oh, it I, was to me. It wasn't to me. I thought <laughs> I thought they were blades who are also. I thought they were undercover. Like they were. I thought they were unrooted that pretended to be part of the blades. If that made sense, they were not. Whether or not, I guess I don't know. Maybe is me. Think something else? Who knows? All right. Okay. So, all right. So then she's not going to be upset because. I mean, Dayrune being our local blades expert would know that. He probably yeah. would have told us. There, there, like, were, there, were no, there were no elves in the blades. Bit okay. Of a, bit of a fanboy. Oh, you're a bit of a fanboy. So you would have told us. Okay. <laughs> Do you have like their, their, their trading cards? The blade trading cards? Uh, not all of them. Not the whole set. Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, if you go to maybe next... she has some, you know, like she just hands out <laughs> yeah. like, to the now, kids. Do you, now, do you go to the Blade Con and get get signatures? I, I do a little de Blade cosplay, yeah. Oh, <laughs> and okay. you know what? Some of them are more valuable now. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> true, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> now, I might actually take some of their stuff and try to sell it at Blade Con. <gasps> Ooh, yeah, yeah. I, I think you know what you need. Bet. You need to get Desrin's signature because I'm sure, especially with the Providence. Of something there that you we took her out, that's going to be worth some serious money. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Perhaps I should befriend her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only, not easy. If only I, she I, were I, your friend. I learned the mistake of we don't have, offer money to so soon. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, though, we've got money. I mean, if you yeah, keep but, saying that, but you no. really shouldn't say that. <laughs> You so that was crazy what uh, happened, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's we, uh, we're, yeah, recap it quick here. Well, we made a friend. No, we kind of. No. We're work, it's a work in progress. It's just, you know, Zinnia, you just got to give her some time, Zinnia. She'll be, she'll fall in love with the, the way the, the way I did. It, it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, we, well, we figured out what Vestman was looking at. We realize we can't get in, but neither can he. And the key is probably somewhere where they haven't looked. <laughs> so we... It's always the last place you look. It is. It is. I mean, there's some bad things down here. They, the bad things that are down here might know where that key is. Um, and we kind of webbed up Des, um, Desra and... Um, had a chat. Had a little chat. Healed her up a little bit. And uh, Darun had the smarts of trying to hire her. And then Zinnia tried to make her a friend. The way That's not the way Zinnia tells that story. I know. <laughs> Ismi goes well, along with the, yeah, just let's, let's, let's just hire her situation. Because I think, you know, hiring would probably be a, a safer bet that she wouldn't stab us in the back. Because, you know, usually hired blades don't kill the people they get a contract from. It's bad for business, but... And now we're going to go explore. Well, we're sleeping right now. We're no, sleeping. we woke up. We woke up. Well, nothing bad happened in the night. I imagine Well, that. we don't know yet. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we ended with that. We yeah. ended with that? We woke okay. up. Yeah. We woke up? Okay. So we woke up <sighs> in, the, mat, in the, the listening room. <laughs> and we need to fi help find her compatriots. Um, and we also then need to go talk to some people uh, uh once dwarven man and and a ghost and the glow man glow man um although i still could use some 
<laughs> Healing to be the most effective assistance in this. Mm. I will regretfully. It's coming out of your pay. With great it's a- personal sacrifice, hand over her wand of cure light wounds. Okay. Your sacrifice is appreciated. All right. So you had, you had used one charge from it. And she will use, uh, da, 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 what is that? D plus one. So she's going to use four more. Ooh. Which would get her. Did you get enough points back? Or? I'm, I'm three down. Okay. So that's fine. You're basically hovering it. Well, would a good Almost berry good. help a little bit? Oh, if, sure. If you took one last night and you took one in the morning, that would be two points, right? I, I gave you four, so I don't know how many you used. Um, I think I might be out of good berries because you can I, have mine because I haven't used any. Okay, because oh. I, I gave my good berries to um, Girdle Keep. Yes, you did. Mm-hmm. I'll give you my girl. I'll give you a couple of mine too. Okay, so how many good berries do I have then? Um, I think if it was two per person, yeah, then you get both of mine and both of mine. So that would be four. Okay. So you'd get three, take three of them, okay. and it'd be good. I would think that as a smaller being, that you would only need one, and you get like <laughs> twice as many hit points. But. Yeah, <laughs> logically speaking, <laughs> right. But you are full for the day. You don't need to eat another bite. I do not. All right. Well, she does. Okay. She does some quick calisthenics, and then says, "I'm ready." All right. All right. Let's listen in these tubes. See if we can pick up anything going around before we head out. Since we're here. Well, Ismi had done that the moment she woke up. She was like going from thing to thing and listening. Drinking your coffee and putting your ear Yep, dr- drinking the, drinking like, you know, my, my caffeinated whatever. Um, listening to the morning show on the- Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Starting with the chief's room and kind of working my way around and following the map that's on the, because uh, there was a map there that kind of showed where everything was. Yep. So, um, you know, listening, then listen again. So, um, okay. Uh, give me a perception check. Yes. Hopefully I will roll well. We'll see. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, 23. All right. You make your way around listening to all the little tubes and it is eerily quiet in nearly all of the tubes, save one where you pick up. Like it's so faint, you you really almost barely didn't hear it, but it sounded like almost like a buzzing noise or or a rapid fluttering or it was definitely some sort of vib vibration type noise, but it was just like you can barely hear it. I point that out, and where on the map that corresponds to that earpiece? Uh, that's, uh, what Girdle Keep had described as the bed, the room of all the beds. It's in the Southwest corner of the complex. Um, you don't hear any chains or any hammers? In no, no, I don't hear the thing that was once a dwarf making no. noise. He, it might be, it might have to rest. It could be theoretically resting right now. So I, I am a little concerned about the buzzing noise in... The room with the beds, which would, be, would have been their dormitory, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fact that there's noise in the dormitory does make me a little nervous. Um, I mean, the kobolds may just be snoring. and Well, they, they're they upstairs. They're kind of hanging out. Well, know. they went somewhere. We don't know where. Hmm. So. Well, so I feel like we should leave someone in this room to listen for noise that comes from the throne room. Could Nipper do that? Or do you want Nipper with you? Nipper is tired of being left behind, but I guess Nipper can do that. <laughs> Nipper is, a, is just a utility fox at this point. <laughs> you tell you. <laughs> I mean, the other option is is we could get the cobalts and have them come down. They conceal themselves. Except in. we don't know where they are. Mm, that's true. Okay. Um, you can go find them if you so wish. Nipper will stay here and listen. Good Nipper. He looks at you pleadingly again. I know. Sad little fox eyes. 
You can call him at any time. I know. Right. I mean, you'll have to leave one of the doors open for him to so get maybe. out. So where do we go from here? Well, since I carefully copied the map, we can look at the best route to to get to that southwest. Mm-hmm. Well, Desra will say that they, um, you know, if, if you step out of the north room of the listening chamber mm-hmm. into that hall, uh, she will say that they came from that from the easterly direction. Mm-hmm. So we could. They, she kind of wants to retrace their path to see if somebody's along the way there. Okay, we can do that. I think we should check out the noise first. Split the party. No. Oh. Well, how far away is the dormitory? Is the dormitory up by the big room, or is it close? Is it basically is the? I'm trying to remember. Is the dormitory? Do we have to go through the room with the chess pieces to get to the dorm? Can we just have Desmond go and check that out, try to find her friends while we go to the noise? No. No, we don't. So the dormitory, so where you guys came in, where the stairs are? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The door to the left is the entrance. Well, both of those doors that go to the left, that's where the dormitory is. So you can just walk down there. Okay. And was this a dead end or was this a... No, that... um, that is a no. There's a room there that you that you nobody just walked into. I just that's why I didn't clear the the visibility. Mm-hmm. So you whoever looked down there sees a room with some tables, and there's doors to the south there. That looks like that may be the shortest route. Unless it didn't end somewhere well, else. Well, that is that is the that's a glowy man hall. That's oh cool. okay. That's Glowy Man Hall. Then that's the shortest route to something. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's... I guess we just... Why don't we just go around? Because I don't think it's going to be... I mean, because we have the map. It's not going to be that far of a stretch to just kind of walk the far way around, is it? Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. You, we can do this pretty quickly. So you leave out of the north room of the listening room then. Mm-hmm, go mm-hmm. east down that hall. I mean, there's, well, I, I, I'm not, I don't want to intentionally distract you, but there are doors that lead north there, but you're going to go east. Yeah, Zinni is yeah. on a mission. On yep. a mission. Okay, so the, you open those doors, and I'm just going to reveal that Ooh. whole section there. Mm. I thought we were going to the buzzing zone. Yeah, but we're taking the long way around so we can look for her around. dead Not friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Up oh, there's one. Coworkers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Found so, one. Uh, yeah, so this is a um, possibly another, I mean, all of these have clearly some sort of, you know, religious significance, but this might be like a meditational room or a meeting hall. There are... Uh, Stone benches line this large chamber, which you can see is like um, like 40 by 40-ish or so. And there's more carnage here. You can see that half a dozen more car- coal bodies are starting to ripen a little bit here on the floor. And one more of the blades, the third of the fourth missing one, which she will tell you is Terrell True Strike. You came in through these doors? We did. But he was behind you? He came back this way. He must have encountered another group coming to ambush us. And looks like he acquitted himself well. But we were were all getting quite injured. There, There was just so many of them attacking from all directions. I mean, this was their home they were defending. True. We just weren't expecting there to be dozens upon dozens of them. It felt like there was no end. Mm. Well, Seems like I your employer will, should have told you something about that, huh? I will start dragging Terrell to the listening room so we can start collecting all of the bodies. I'll help him. And then we'll catch up to you. Yeah. Well, why don't we just keep dragging him the way we're going because then we're heading more towards the front. Because if we drag him back there, we're going to have to drag him towards the front. 
so so Desra will kind of go through her pack and she doesn't really have any sheets or anything, but yeah, she'll just she'll she'll probably just pick him up. Okay, oh, good. And carry him which way? We'll take him with us. Okay, good. Okay. Does he have any cool equipment that we can <laughs> take? We don't do that to friends. He's not a friend. I but he's know. a friend of a friend, so that makes him a friend adjacent. She's not my friend, remember? Oh. Does he have a plus one rapier? <laughs> <laughs> so she, she doesn't loot him. She picks him up and carries him with all of his stuff. I do detect magic on him. Surreptitiously. <laughs> From behind her. <laughs> detect future loot. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So he does have some shinies. Um, I mean, he does have, you can see there's some potions on a little bandolier. Uh-huh. And he does have a rape here. Oh, I tell Pike. Whisper. I whisper to Pike. Says me, you should probably take off his sidearm before you poke yourself with it. Because it's just probably sitting there, just lopping around, and she's going to hurt her. It's going to fall out, or she's going to damage it. Pike, why don't you help with that? So she's just going to look at you. Are, are you getting at something? Yeah, he's got a weapon that might be helpful. <laughs> and you had a weapon, and then Pike took it, and he was going to use it. He, but we give it back to you. So if it could be replaced, that would be very kind. I mean, Actually, I think he's what, not going to use it. What my companions are trying to say is there are some scary things down here. And any bonus we can give to the rest of the party is going to possibly save all of us. So if he has anything that we can use, can you please allow us to borrow them while we're down in this dungeon? All right. So I'll eye you all and then unhook the rapier sheath from the belt and hand it to Pike. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm going to just check it out for make sure that it's a, you know, a good one for Pike. Yeah. It does turn out to be like this <laughs> otter bane. Otter bane. Otter bane. Yes. <laughs> Plus uh, five. Otter bane. I want to know the dude who cast otter bane or. <laughs> Talking about evil. Yeah. <laughs> oh. No. I evil hate was. those otter bane. That's a 21. Yeah. All right. It is also a plus one rapier. Look at that. So there you go. That one even looks better on you, to tell the truth. Less worn. Mm -hmm. He clearly wasn't as good. As, no. Shh. I didn't yeah. say that out loud. And she's actually, so she'll take, she'll take off the, the potion bandolier and, and slip it on. There you go. Okay. So Onward. That will help out with that. Okay. Um, okay. Onward. Oh. Onward, indeed. Then going east out of that hall, and I, I mean, we're just going to pass over all the kobolds because it sounds like you guys aren't going to be looting kobolds along the way. No. Nope. If you want to come back and do that later. No. no. They're friends. You don't loot friends. Okay. So that hall is a, basically cuts down, like the, it leads south all the way down the east side of this, of this temple. But about halfway there, there's a door leading back west, and that's that's the direction she said that they came from. Okay. Mm. Okay. I just look. I open the door and look. Okay. I mean, they, the doors the doors were actually slightly mm -hmm. open. Okay. I okay. look. Okay. And you can uh, you can actually see there's a intervening room between where you're at and the uh, another room you guys had passed through, the one that led to the listening chamber. So it kind of just makes a square mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can see that there's a, uh, perhaps it's like an old bedroom in, in between. So had you not gone straight into the listening chamber and then kind of hold up and then proceeded on, had you left that room, you would have come here. Okay. So she, I mean, she kind of waits for you to go through. She's like, uh, there is a strange little creature in here. We left it alone. Oh, what do you mean a strange little creature? Proceed. Mm -hmm. Fine. I'm fine. I'll go in first. Oh, okay. Well, 
I'm behind Pike. I'm tanking. <laughs> Yo, you can just jump on Cord at some point <laughs> and just be a tank monster. Then, uh, yeah, it's it was clearly once some sort of personal living quarters, possibly for maybe the person in charge of this. There's a simple stone bed uh, in the corner of the room with you know it, no sign of any sheets or anything on it other than the the, the, the size and shape of it is the only thing that really would suggest it's a bed. Uh, there's a kind of a, a, like a table in the center. And then the big piece that looks slightly out of place, there's a large anvil kind of in the southeast uh, side of the room. Mm-hmm. On which there is a, a skeleton and a strange contraption. To the Next to the anvil is, um, it looks like one of those mannequins that you would hang armor on. But it's been modified so that it actually has like a hinged arm with a large uh, warhammer that is resting on the anvil. So resting on the skeleton? Yeah, it basically, and the skeleton you see, the head is crushed. Mm. So with a little bit of deduction, it looks like this little contraption with the hinged arm and the warhammer was used to probably kill whatever whoever was laying on mm. the anvil. But that person wasn't bound, so you can start to possibly think about what what has happened here. But to her point, there is a strange little creature in the room. Um, It's about a foot tall, and it looks kind of like... um, It's just a little fleshy humanoid creature with a bulbous head. And you... Might not have immediately noticed it because when you start coming into the room, it it went and hid behind the anvil. Um, on the work table in the center of the room, well, actually, I, I misspoke. The ta- sorry, the table is in the southwest corner. The bed's in the center of the room. Sorry, I, I don't transpose this in my brain, but you're seeing the map differently. On that work table, you can see some craftsman tools, and there is a um, a statue, uh, like an obsidian statuette. Of what looks like possibly an owlbear. Okay. I'd like to start with a knowledge. Uh, sure, on the creature? Yes. Give me a knowledge arcana. Ooh. 28. You've seen something like this before. In fact, your, uh, your master had one. That, that's a homunculus, hmm. which must be really old. To, uh, and maybe probably served this person, and it's just been orphaned here mm-hmm. for hundreds of years. So you know that they're they're semi intelligent, little magical creatures. Hello. Uh, it it does not reply to you, but it does peek out and uh, just stays there watching you. I am not going to hurt you. We're not going to hurt you. I just have some questions. Ismi is going to basically repeat the same thing, but she's going to try to do it in Dwarven. Ah, kill, okay. Kill Kant. Kaldathi. Kaldathi. She'll like say the same thing in Kaldathi. Okay. And I assume, I assume Zinnia was saying it in... in um, Galtian? Galtian. Galtian. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, it, it's ears. Well, it's little, it doesn't really even have so much pronounced ears, but it kind of perks up and, and stares intently at you, but still does not reply to either of us. Yeah. You got a sense though, that when you spoke is me that it understood. Mm. Okay. Um, maybe it'd react better to Dayrun. Perhaps. Is the skeleton like dwarf height? Yeah. Okay. I'll turn around the corner and say, little one, you are safe. We will not hurt you. Would you let us pass through if we asked you some questions? Could you answer them for us? 
I'm going to take out what good berry I have left and kind of put my hand out. It's for you to eat. You'll feel better. The zinnia. Eat. Mm. Yeah, I, I will say, I will explain what it is. Oh. It, it... Sorry, you, you roll really well. Yeah. So you would know that they, they actually can't speak. Mm. That whoever creates them, oh. they're basically, they're, they're constructs. So they, they, they don't eat or drink or anything they like understand. that. They're, they're, they understand. Yeah. They're, um, they're a little bit like a familiar, but they're more limited in what they can do. But they, uh, but they are actually slightly smarter than a familiar, and they're just like a lab assistant. And they actually can communicate telepathically with their creator. Oh, that's oh. the only person they can t- communicate with. Yeah. Okay. Can he, he can't but it, but it like... probably can understand you in whatever language, because they usually will know the language of the person that made them. Okay. Yeah. So can you, can you answer us with gestures? Yes. Uh, give me a diplomacy check. And what are you going to do? Are you going to like go approach it or just stay where you're at? I, I will fly so I'm at eye level with it, okay. but not, not get close. Because he's, I mean, you're about the same size. Yes. As him. Yeah. And that's an 18 on diplomacy. Okay. So you kind of approach him a little bit mm-hmm. and... Uh, In will... a non-threatening way. All right. He, it will look at you and make a gesture, like a, maybe a nod. Okay. And then I will say, was that your master? And I'll point to the... It nods. I am sorry. And I'm, I'm speaking in Kaldethi now, by the way. Oh, okay, great. Yep, because I, I can also speak. Okay. Their dialect is a little bit different than... than you know, I'm doing the best I can. No, it mm-hmm. sounds pretty good. It's, it's, it's mm-hmm. pretty spot on for a non-dwarf. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. Okay. In called Deathy, I'll say, because my dialect isn't as good. It, it's a, you need a little just cunt talk mm-hmm. in it more often. I think you'd be better. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take out a piece of paper, a quill, and a pen, and I'll say, can you all write a lab report on what happened down here? <laughs> it's terrible. It's, it's what happens when you vacation in the South. <laughs> Well, I will show the symbol on the ring. I'll show the ring and say, do you know this symbol? It nods. Do you know of any keys with this symbol? It shakes its head. Do you know of any other devices with this symbol? It doesn't really seem to. No, it, it just looks at you. Quizzically. Mm. Other objects with this symbol? I mean, it nods, but you've, I mean, you've seen the symbol a lot. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah. yeah. I, it's me Did kinda... it recognize the paper and pen as being a thing that it can? Oh, to actually like write? Yeah. Like, he, I, like he, I said. He was asking in earnest. Because I don't, it's, it's a lab assistant. I'm not sure if it's, oh. if it was trained, it can't mm. speak, but... Was it trained to take notes? Can it write? Can it write? If it can't speak, can it write? What intelligence do you have to have for, to, to be able to write? Well, you're talking. I'm going to go over to the workbench. Is that where he's behind still? Or, or is he, he behind the bed? He's behind the anvil. Okay, yeah. I would like to kind of wrap around here and go look at the workbench. I don't know if they can write. That's interesting. Um, sure. Yeah, okay. I mean, I like that idea. Uh, sure. So you show it the pen and paper. And and I'm asking for a report on what happened in the lab. So basically what went wrong that the uh, his master ended up smashed on a anvil. Okay. So you're going to just like put it on the floor for it to write on? Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. So you slide it towards it and along with the, your quill pen. All right, I'm sorry. So then, Darun, you said you were going to walk over to the table? Yep, the workbench. Yeah. Okay. And, and Zinnia is going to continue standing next to it. 
Sure. Sure. Uh, Ismi's going to like look over the bed and see if like, if there's anything like in or around the bed that might identify the skeleton kind of. I don't want to go near the skeleton, but I'm like, I'm like, is there, I mean, people have stuff like by their bedsides, you know? Okay. So you, so you guys kind of like, but nobody, you're all staying kind of away from the anvil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Desra's standing there holding her friend and she's like, um, is this really worth our time? And yes. She Real wa- quickly, Desra. She'll just, walk just over quickly. to the other, like by the other door and s- set her friend down since she's getting heavy. Okay. The homunculus takes the, the your quill pen and then starts like s- slowly scribbling on the paper. And you can see it writing out and very kind of not well defined called Bethy. Okay. You can see it start writing out. And so Zinnia and you two are kind of watching it write. Ismi, you don't really, I mean, the bed is like anything that was here is gone. Okay. Like you think that, I mean, the kobolds obviously kind of wandered through here. Mm. Why they left the little creature alone? I mean, who knows? Or maybe it never revealed itself this whole time. But I guess yeah, I, like, I was looking for like, no, do they have like, is there etchings? Is there like a, that's the thing I'm wondering is like, did the cobalts just stay away because of the homunculus or, but it's basically been picked over. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, cause really, there's really nothing else interesting in the room except for that, that statue that, uh, they were kind of looking at and, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, they were, and you can see that. It actually wasn't fully finished, but no. uh, whoever, I mean, presumably the original owner of this room crafted this mm-hmm. a long time ago. And I mean, it's done out of obsidian. So maybe this was one of the guys that did some of the obsidian work. Mm. It's in great condition. It's probably worth a fair amount of money. How tall is it? I mean, is it just like a 12? Uh, it's like, I think like a foot tall. Okay. So, I mean, it, it's probably kind of heavy. And you said it's a statue of an owl bear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I will cast uh, detect magic on it. Okay. It's it's not magical. Okay. Then I'll put it uh, in my backpack. All right. Um, the you realize that the homunculus has written the word die, and then is writing die, and then is writing die. Okay. Um. Did someone put him on there or did he do it himself? It seems to be, make a sense motive. Eh? Zena, you can too, by the way, actually. 19. It doesn't have much in the way of facial expressions. Did you get any higher, Zena? No, I got 15. Okay. All right. But you, you, it seems to be like it's getting agitated. Okay. Um. I'm I'm feeling nervous here. <laughs> what is it saying? It says die, 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 die. Does it want to die? I, I think maybe we should put it out of its misery. I'm wondering, and I'm saying this in not in Kildathi, uh, I'm wondering if either his master committed suicide and he's upset because he's been left without a purpose, or if he was, his master was involved in something and the homunculus malfunctioned in a spectacular way, like mm-hmm. misunderstood a command or something like that and uh, glitched. So neither of those are great, but the second one is more immediately concerning. Um, so, and then I, I turn to him and uh, the homunculus and switch back into Dwarvish and, and say, is there anything we can do to help ya? Uh, it starts to kind of like shake back and forth, still holding your quill pen. And then like start, now it starts like flinging the rest of the ink erratically on your paper. Okay. I'm going to fly up. <laughs> okay. As Zinnia flies up, the little creature suddenly charges at um, me, at Pike. Cool. With the pen. Oh, good. That's 
for once, I'm not particularly worried in the combat. <laughs> but I'm the pen make... may be mightier than the sword, but I'm. I am going to make you roll initiative, rapier. though. Okay. Escalated. <laughs> a big whopping 11. Um, I got a 19. 10. A 16. Okay. Uh, Zinnia, you go flying up just in time as it charges after Pike. I mean, it, it may not be much of a threat, but you need to do something about it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I'm going to uh, do a splintered spear at it. Oh, okay. Because. I don't know. It's, yeah. All right. So you call forth a magic spear and send it flying at the little creature. Uh, go roll your attack. That's a one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, your splintered spear just splinters all over the ground, uh, scattering the paper and uh, sending the creature further into a rage. Pike. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Do you have a calm emotions? Um, not particularly. Uh, I mean, it's Zinnia probably t- maybe told you. I mean, it's a construct and not a. It's not a living being in the truest sense. Exactly. Um, which is why. Uh, I'm assuming that most of my like affect mind spells mm-hmm. aren't going to actually affect its mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, which means that, unfortunately, you can use that new rapier. No, uh, I'm going to do ray of fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, blast forth a ray of fire. Roll your attack. <laughs> what did you roll? A seven. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's let's see, plus. <laughs> That's a spell attack. So that's a ranged. That's just a ranged attack. It's a ranged touch. It's a ranged touch. Yeah. 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 Uh, So 12. (laughs) Your fire goes wide as you're surprised by this tiny little threatening foe. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, Ismi, you're, you know, you're 10 feet from this right now. I'm going to run. Get behind little tantrum, and I'm gonna pick it up under the armpits like you would pick up a screaming toddler that's having a freak out. It's like, oh no, 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 no. And I'm just gonna pick it up real quick, kind of take it off the ground, and it's like, oh no, 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 like that, really tight. Can can as can I do a free action and say no? Well. So is it, so is me basically you'll have to kind of run around and, yep. and you will have to make a grapple check at this thing. Yep. To try to to try to grapple it. Can I can I just yell no kill it? <laughs> can I just You can. I say that. So you see her going to grab it. No, just kill it. Just kill it. Just kill it. Just kill it. Do you change course or do you try to finish your grapple? Uh I take my dagger and go at it with the dagger. Cause... Okay. Okay. And that's a 21 with the little dagger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a hit. Give me your damage. Uh, two. I don't think I add anything to a dagger, do I? Add your strength bonus. It, I yeah. have no strength bonus. Yeah, so it's just so two. two. Two points. Try to get it not to attack him. <laughs> nope. I think it's too late. <laughs> I'm just, you know, it's so funny is that... <laughs> Vezrin and the blade, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just this little thing. Um, okay. Okay, you, uh, you, you, you wing it, but uh, it's, uh, that's it. And Zerun, you just, you're over there, you're like putting this thing in, and you look him over there, and you're, the rest of your party is now. Korda. <laughs> being attacked by Mini-Me. <laughs> Korda, toy. <laughs> oh. Oh, toy. <laughs> Totally and I'm going to get across from Corda, and uh, I'll do me first. I'll pull up my bludgeon. I'll cry it out loud. <laughs> um, that's a 25 to hit. <laughs> that's a hit. Smash it. With my smash mag- it. With my magic bludgeon. Oh, it's bigger <laughs> than that. Okay. Give me some damage. Oh, yeah. 
Will damage. Squashy squash. Squashy squash indeed. Sorry. Where are you? I really wanted you to miss just so we could get one attack off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so that's nine points of crushing damage. You squash it pretty good, but it is not. And Cord is going to bite. Dead. That is going to be an, a 12. To hit? Mm hmm. That misses. Oh, I'm sorry. A 14 because she's flanking. Okay. All right. So you smash it and mm. it's like, it's almost like Play-Doh. Half of it's all smushed. Okay. And then Corda chomps Stop. down. Oh, it's not much for, you might still get your chance here. Um, that's going to be uh, five points of bite damage. No. Yeah. You only had three left. So Corda okay. grabs it, shakes it a little around. Yep. And it's uh, strange. Fleshy little head pops off. Ew. And it flails a bit as she continues to play. Yeah, play. You, you can play. keep it, Corda. I was hoping you get information out of that thing. Oh, we get some information. Die, die, die. So, did you get your lab report? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so is there anything else we need in here? No. That hammer looks pretty just standard, right? Just looks like a heavy uh, war hammer. Detect magic. It is magical. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> well, you know, we just mentioned a war <laughs> hammer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, it, it, uh, it's a pretty nice. It's, ornate, it's ornately designed. There, there is a little, uh, some uh, Zakat symbol... Symbols on it, you know, oh, you possibly remove sure. those. And it is attached to this strange contraption, mm -hmm. which you could make a quick engineering check. Yeah. You could take, probably take 10 on it, too. Oh, yeah. I did. Yeah. I got that. 19 on my spellcraft, which somebody else might need to do that. But um, my engineering is going to be a 28. Well, this is clever. Um, yeah, I mean, to put it delicately, it's based on the little rope attachment, mm -hmm. do you think that, yeah, he he took himself out here. Wow. Oh, he pulled a trigger. And, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's what it, like, he committed suicide looks like. And as I slowly pry, you know, unhook the, the hammer, <laughs> <laughs> that's too bad. <laughs> what You're do you think, Yeah, What does it do? I think it is magical. Yeah, I'm sorry. You said you got 19. Like 19? Uh, ooh. Yeah. I got 27. 20. Pike, what do you think? Yeah. So we get a second opinion on this thing. Looking yeah. at the lab report, I think that. <laughs> you and your lab reports. I'll let you know if the next time I go to the bathroom, my lab report. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> What the heck? Are you getting enough fiber in your diet? Oh, yeah. I'm a <laughs> druid after all. <laughs> it's all about the fiber. Um, it is a, it is a, you said nine, it's a plus one flaming warhammer. <gasps> oh, nice. Oh, this is kind of cool. Um, would you mind if I use this <laughs> for now? I don't think I can, so. <sighs> sure. Oh. You want to wield it, young one? No. Flaming is pretty cool, though. Yeah. It is. I've got a bludgeon if you want to use no. it. Magic bludgeon. Oh, no. Does the bludgeon resize? Uh, <gasps> oh. oh. That would be way too cool. That would be pretty cool. I don't believe that does, no. Um, that was... Okay. That was the... Wait, whose was that? That was the goblins, right? The goblin, the goblin chiefs. Yeah, you're collecting chief weapons. I mean, it was small for goblin, but it was a goblins heavy. Goblins are bigger than me, though. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. That is kind of funny, though. Yeah. Hmm. I just did it because it's a bludgeon. I can use it. You know, mm -hmm. like the club. Okay, having defeated the mighty homunculus, <laughs> I do have a masterwork warhammer, though. If you want to. Yeah. So this is a heavy, sorry, this was a Warhammer. Warhammer. Plus one flaming Warhammer. Plus one flaming. Yeah, hammers and flail, uh, hammers and bludgeons and all that are are uh, not good for a 
a short, thin, furry sailor. So, mm-hmm. did you just call me a short, thin sailor? No, he's talking about oh, himself. Oh, oh, I hate the water. Open okay. seas make me sick. Okay. So Desiree will pick her friend back up and continue on. So, are you ready to follow? Yep. Yes, of course. All right. So you go basically west out of that chamber, which again now you're right next to the presumably open door, mm-hmm. which whichever door you left open to yep. the listening room. Mm-hmm. And then south takes you through that strange, uh, uh, you know, dragon chest looking room with the the lines of figures. South then through the fountain chamber. We can collect up the other friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. uh, yeah. So she'll go and deposit her friend in the foyer next to that. And then if you point out the fallen wizard, you can collect his body also. And now you have three of the four fallen blades. So. Well, there you go. shall we go to the um, dormitory? Because that might be a very good place to find out what happened to the uh, the other. Uh... Now that we're down near that area. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you basically have the, yeah. I don't know if you're going to like tr- still try to explore the full place, but you said you were specifically going towards the dormitory. Yep. To mm-hmm. like, listen for that noise thing. Okay. Okay. I'm dragging corpses around here because why not? All right, then you're going to go west out of the foyer room Mm -hmm. to the open or to the closed door. All right, so everybody's moving up. Oh, bother. I just remembered I left the glowing quarterstaff outside the throne room. Oh. Oh, well. I'll have to collect that up later. Well, I mean, you walked out of that room. You could have picked that up unless you wanted to leave it there. No, I didn't. I just didn't think of it. Okay, well, it's fine. You can... That was a, a short Warhammer, right? A short? You have in yours Warhammer short war pick and Warhammer long war pick in your equipment guide. Oh. Uh, doo, 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 doo. It, it, it was a dwarven yeah. weapon. Yeah. So. It'd be it unnecessarily complicated to put a long-handled Warhammer in, <laughs> on the, that machine. It would, but it's also got reach. Mm. <laughs> Just for reach, obviously, reasons. And it's two-handed versus, you know. Okay, sorry, I just had to look. Just I a thought short. There was a war pick, cut Warhammer oh, short. Oh, Warhammer short. War. I see yeah. what you're saying. Sorry, we can talk about. It. Oh, I got you. Okay, I kind of forgot there were two different ones. I, I mean, are you hoping for the longer one? No, I mean it. It. it it's really up to you. It, it's. Not, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make it a, a thing. I just. I don't know if it would be a longer, it just longer Warhammer would be reach, right? That's just the only cool thing about it. And it's, but it's a two handed weapon. So, well, you don't use a shield though. Uh, I do when I'm casting, but that's about it. Yeah. Because I use the bludgeon, which is a two handed, anyways. Oh, okay. I mean, it does the more damage. Yeah. No, just roll it, a d6 and see what it comes up. We'll go, we'll go with the long one. Cool. Just, I was reading my little notes there on the, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, long pole. That kind of actually makes a little bit of sense for his contraption anyway. That's fine. All right, so yeah, go with the Warhammer long pick. Cool. Okay. All right, great. Okay, then you guys are standing at the door to the bedroom. And who's going to open it up? I'll do that. All right, Ismi steps up, opens the door, and peers in. Oh, and wow. you see, yeah, it's basically very long slightly narrow bunk room mm-hmm. with stone bunks. And the the buzzing flapping noise now is definitely more audible that you're here at the south end of the room because at the north end of the room, y- as you look, you see a bunch of small creatures that actually had been sort of uh, just like sitting around on the bunks or, or on the floor. And uh, once you open the door and kind of peer in, you see one of them sort of uh, perk up and look in your direction, and you rec- basically they look like sort of like oversized mosquitoes in a way, but they've got little arms, and you probably recognize what they are because they are sturges. I knew it. Dangerous little bloodsuckers, uh, and they, yeah, there's five of them, and uh, once the one kind of looks over and sees you. It starts to flap its little wings. And let's do a quick initiative. 
23. Yay. Not 23. Not 23. 14. Um, 10. 14. Okay. So, Ismi, do you... So, obviously, Zinnia has the initiative, but you are the one looking in. Do you say anything to alert and or trigger... I say five Sturges, and then I unsheath my bow so I can try to... Because they're flying at us, so I'm going to try to pick one off or hit one before they get to us, the one that's coming towards me. So, all right. Well, let's have Zinnia react first. Mm-hmm, 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 what do you mm-hmm. What do you do, Zinnia? You were kind of back, well. Where were you in the lineup? Um, oh, I was I was next to Ismi, and okay, like I I went in. As, all right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I uh, magic missile wand of magic missile. Okay, you go blasting one of the first sturges. Mm-hmm. And do you remember that wand? Like how many? Missiles? Does it shoot? Which one? I don't know. You you don't know. I would have to go look it up. Arr. Enough. Enough. Was it a daily one? Yeah. Okay. It was probably it's probably five a day. Yeah, it is. I'm looking at my notes. Well, and it I, says I, five a day magic missiles. Oh, well, it says five times per day. But is it just one missile five times per day, or is it? Oh, what caster level it was. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that's an excellent point. Um, because you get a second missile at every couple levels, at right? Third level. At third so level. So you do two missiles at third level, three missiles at five level at level five. Okay. Let's assume that it's at third level, so you get two missiles. Okay. That is what I was asking. Thank you. All right, so you blast the first Sturge. So eight. Damage. All right. Twin bolts catch the creature in its squirmy little body, and it explodes in a burst of blood and gore. I go, ha ha. <laughs> it's like popping a little bloody pinata. All right. Uh, <laughs> Pike. Okay. I'm going to move about 10 feet forward, I think, to right about there. Oh, no. About 15 feet. One more. Okay. And I'm going to cast slow on the remaining oh, surges. Okay. Uh, they get a will save, right? Pretty sure. Yes. Let's see. Wow. <laughs> Any 20 on the first one. They're, they're strong will. That's a foul. Um, that's, and what's the DC on that? Is that a first level spell? No. Uh, that is third level spell. Oh, okay. okay, so one passed, the others fell. And there are four of them? There's four remaining. Okay, yeah. so three of them are slowed. Okay. Okay, great. Except for the one Sturge that has really overcome a lot of trials in its life. It, he, he is. And has, a, you know, the will of a thousand... <laughs> He's the one that will live far beyond everybody. Okay, uh, is me. Okay, she is going to she's going to shoot at it, and she's going to try to hit the one that's speedy. The one racing forward from the pack. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would do this. Uh, that would be a twenty-six. That's a hit. Yeah. And let's see. That is damage. 1d10. I'm trying to find my d10 here. Hold on. There it is. Thank you. Two plus, I guess plus one. Well, because it says it's 1d10 plus, but I don't know. I didn't put down what the plus was for that longbow. Well, that was the composite longbow that didn't have a strength modifier on it, right? Yes. So there, it's just plus zero. Plus zero. Okay. So it'd be, I got it. And it's a d10, not a d8? Okay. No, it's not a longbow. Was it composite longbow or composite regular bow? That the elves had? Yeah. That would affect whether it's a D8 or D10 damage die would in it. Elven bad guys, they were rolling D8s. Oh, so roll the D8. Still got a two. <laughs> did you? I did. Same number. Same number. <laughs> okay. So you wing the little bugger, but do not kill it. 
And then I'm going to walk up. So I'm next to Pike and I'm taking out my rapier. All right. So you toss the bow side, drawing your rapier, standing ready for the Sturge onslaught. Mm -hmm. Darun. That's the distance on what we see, right? Um, Let's see what happens when they have some falling rocks on them. Really? Really. (laughs) This is why I didn't go real close. Rocks fall, all of them die. Rock and roll, as they say, in a very unfamiliar way. And I will cast uh, the... um, a I'm sorry, stone call, and that will be just. I don't know what it does with people are flying, but so I I do have to say this though, yeah. because you can you have to center it on a spot you can see. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that's got a 40 foot radius. Yeah, so center it on them, but right. I'm is, closer is, than 40 feet. Yeah, this is not that big oh. of a room. No. Yeah. Um, you would catch both Pike and Ismay in it. Well, how good are they at dodging? <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a joke. It's okay. a joke, everyone. It's a joke. It's a joke. All right. Well, I will go ahead and um, try something different then. I'm going to do a, uh, I will do a spit venom. I like that one. <laughs> okay. You're ca- so you're casting a spell? Yeah, I have to get up though. Okay. So I'm going to go walk past them and right, right past Pike because I've got a range on there. And, and then I'm going to ha- spit venom and will require, um, you do, I think you get a save on that. Okay. And I believe, sorry, it's a touch attack, a stream of venom, a range touch attack. Um, there is fortitude for a partial. Okay, and which one are you spitting at? Uh, let's do the one closest right in front of me. So I'll bing that there. Okay, I got a 15 fort save. What's Ooh. the DC? Oh, um, well, that's third, so plus my, um, it's going to be a 17 okay. DC. So, so um, hit, you are blinded for a round, and I need you to do a save to be poisoned by black adder venom. Does he take damage? Um, in the, in, in successive rounds. Um, okay. So one, one D two con damage. Okay. So you spit venom. Yep. Right. It's blinded. Little, right in a little creature's face. It's yep. blinded. Yep. And then it's going to take. Nothing. 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 Uh, nothing. Well, it's blinded just so you know. It is blinded. And it looks cool. It's like a slowed. puked out venom. So that's the, the, so you blinded the fast one. No. Yeah. No. No. The one on the left. The one on the left. Yeah. Okay. Great. That's my turn. That's their turn. Turn around. What do you wipe my mouth off, huh? <laughs> Got a little. Got a little venom on my chin. Okay. Well, then the blinded one, the blinded and slowed one is. I wait, don't wait, know. wait. Is uh, what's her face not going to do anything? She has a light crossbow. Yeah, she's going to do something. Thank Sorry. you. We hired her for a reason. All right. All right. Fine. So she will <laughs> step. If we twist your arm. So she will step in uh, from behind, see the Sturges, and I imagine she had her crossbow loaded, so she'll whip that out and take a pot shot at the... I'm going to roll randomly because she doesn't know who... Like, she doesn't know who's blinded or whatever, so she's just going to do... It's going to shoot the one in the back. That is going to be a hit. And crossbow. That's also just a D8. For two points of damage. My God. At least it's not just me. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Okay, great. Now can they go? Um, okay. The unblinded, slightly uh, non-slowed, but slightly hurt Sturge is going to go flying up to Darun and attempt to eat your face. As it would. I mean, it does look good. Well, it can't see, so it doesn't know if it looks good. No, I'm, this this one, probably, this, oh, one this one not oh, blinded. Unblinded, so, yeah. The unblinded one. Uh so it gets to do a uh a touch attack. And it rolled a natty one. That's, Woo! So it, it got close to me realized it wasn't as tasty as it thought it was. That is disappointing. Uh, some, and with its minus one penalty on attack rolls, that is a zero then. Well, this one's the one not slowed. Oh, not slowed. Yeah. Not yeah. slowed. The one it on the, smelled your yeah. breath. It did. <laughs> it was like, oh. And you know. 
Okay, blinded guy is just gonna like fly crazily in circles. He's not he the, I can't imagine he's gonna successfully do anything. And then the other slowed ones can just move. Um at half their normal speed. Oh, at half speed for the all right, so they have a speed of forty, so they can still get five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Five, ten, fifteen, yeah. twenty. So they can still all get up to their own, except for the one blinded in the back. And initiatives. Eighteen. Twelve. Twenty. Net twenty for um twenty-three. Wow. All right. Is me for the win. Okay, so now they're close. I'm going to shoot. Nope. Nope. You tossed your bow to draw your rapier. <sighs> That's I did. I did. You're right. Um, I'm going to step up. Yeah, you can five foot step up. Five foot step up. And I'm going to go at the one I had shot at. The one that I knew had been running. You know, the one that's yep. got my arrow sticking out of it. And I'm going to take a swing. Uh, be a 20. All right. How do you want to kill it? Just stab it in the heart and harpoon it and then flick it. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you sp sp slice right through it and it spews blood and it is gross. Okay. They do not have a lot of hit points. Okay. Okay. Uh, Darun. You got two of them right in front of you. Yep. I'm going to do uh, then take a five foot step back here. Is that possible there? Yeah. And I am going to take out my new hammer. Oh. Mm. So I have a question not to bore listeners, but if it's a quick answer, it would be great. So it's a six foot, that's its reach. What, what does it even mean? <laughs> what? How is a six foot reach when it's all five foot squares? Do you know what I mean? Is that really complicated? And no, you're. That's. I think you're just seeing the numbers from yeah the, oh. the Adventures Edge game. Okay, so it's so it's got reach. It, it's just a reach weapon. Okay, so then I will flame it. Yeah. So you you pull it out. It, it's a uh, nineteen plus uh, twenty six to hit. All right. Let's do... Oh, sorry. Should probably Go ahead and roll. Yeah, you know what? It's the first time you're hitting with it. Yeah. You can roll the damage on it if you would like. The, 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 it, you, oh, it, oh it, sure. It explodes I appreciate and turns it. to crispy bits. I appreciate that. Uh, I mean, not a whole lot of damage because I rolled a one on it, but that's not the, the, the flaming damage. So that would be uh, four, point, four points of just regular damage and then four points of flaming damage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You. It's... Sizzling bits and blood go everywhere. Oh, that's cool. It's my turn. All right. Do you want to finish the last, well, second to last one off here? Or what do you want to do there, Zinnia? You don't want to have, what's her face go? Or not? She'll, no, she'll go out. She, go, she'll go she will okay. go last. All right. So then, yep. Then the, the next one up in the line that's not blinded, I will magic missile with the Ooh. wand again for six damage. It has exploded. Okay, and then, well, okay, and then so Pike used. Wait, you yeah. started right. So uh, then, she, um, Esme started. So, yeah, I'm the so last. Pike gets a turn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'll ray of fire the one in the back, and that's twenty one, okay. even without any bonuses because yeah. of it being blind. Yeah. Uh, so that is one d four. It has a chance to survive. Four. It is dead. Yay. Yay. Great job. So you've cleared the, cleared the room of what you might end up guessing to be possibly pet sturges. Pet sturges? Pet sturges. So he said pet sturges. Who has pet sturges? Cobalt? No. Really? No. They do? Well, these guys did. Oh. Um, well, they're really going to be upset when they find out we killed their pets. Also, motorcyclists like sturges. Yep. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, Desra, I think we found your last friend. 
And you do. Fletcher you Fetch does not condone such. <laughs> does you does not condone the, puns. <laughs> the last of the blades fallen. Oh. Well, then, you know. Who's this one? That is Rook the Razor. Oh, it's a cool name. That was. You should take it. It's available for use now. <laughs> so, with all four fallen blades collected, all that remains is facing off with potentially glowy man or not. Mm. And a strange dwarf chain creature, whatever. Well, we're closer to glowy man because I think glowy man's, the door to glowy man is just outside the dormitory. Yep, there's a door right there. So, glowy man? Yes. You uh, check for liquid vials on her? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, do a, I do a detect magic real quick before. Yeah, just like. Uh, I mean, yes. Rook the Razor does have a few odds and ends. Uh, I will give that to you. Okay, cool, cool, but, cool. Uh, so it sounds like, though, you after collecting those, you wanted, you're going to throw the door open. Yeah, let's go. Because we're going to go into the hallway, and then the, there's that doorway that leads to Glowy Man. Okay. Then you stand looking north at the hall, connecting this side of the, uh, of the temple to the north side, mm-hmm. kind of near where the throne room is. You throw the ancient door open with the words of Dracotic warning and to keep you at bay, and you stare into the hall. In the gloom, you do in fact see what appeared to be a glowing figure in f- full plate armor. Oh. Indeed glowing. Uh, it was seemingly hovering inert above the floor, but as the doors open and light spews in, it seems to almost turn and face you, a glowing battle axe in its right hand, sort of list, list, listlessly hanging there, and the whole thing oddly begins moving slowly towards you, not walking, just sort of floating, but we will have to find out next week. Oh, I knew it. Really? What Glowy Man is. All right. I know. We, we, we went long. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think we'll next. wrap this up in one more session. Yeah. 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 Oh. The Dungeons of the Monastery. All right. One more. One more. One I more. feel pretty confident in that. Yeah. Unless we just have a long conversation with Glow Man. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the conclusion. Uh, he gives us all the answers to the universe. And we're done. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. we'll find out more about Glowing Man <laughs> next week. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed our show and want more, please leave us a rating and review on whichever platform you use. And of course, feel free to share us on social media. We'll be back next week with more adventures in the world of TELUS. To tide you over, you can read more about the cast, characters, and the world of TELUS at AdventuresEdgeRPG.com. 